Um, this video is going to be about how to use uh, main stage, uh, how to route your soloist for marching for marching band show, marching pageantry show, uh, route your soloist into uh, an audio interface into main stage, and then into your mixer. Uh, a few days ago, in the marching arts audio forum, someone was asking about how to do this, or if you can do this, or what the advantage is. So. Uh, I know some people have some experience with this, um, some people don't, so I thought I'd make a video uh, explaining how to do that. So I'm going to kind of talk about the, 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 um, the signal flow, the physical signal flow, how it works within main stage, um, and then some advantages, disadvantages, reasons why you would want to do this, and reasons why you wouldn't want to do this. So first, let's just start with signal flow. Uh, of course, the first thing you would have would be your wireless transmitters and wireless mics, which would then go into your antennas, whether you have directional fin antennas like this, or if you have your omnidirectional antennas, okay? So, um, so wireless mic, wireless transmitter to the antennas, then through the cable, going down here. Um, here's our distro. Um, our distro, our wireless receivers, and then our, our S32 stage box. Um, here's the cable from the wireless antenna here. Let me turn the exposure up a little bit so you can see. Um, I had everything, I zip tied everything underneath to kind of like not create such a big mess of cables, but um, right now it is kind of a, a web in here or a spaghetti bowl, however you want to call it. Um, anyway, so here's the wireless antenna cable going back around. Uh, here's the back end of the distro, here's that wireless antenna cable, um, then feeds into our wireless receivers. We have four soloists, so we have four receivers. Let me just turn the exposure up so you can see. Here's the output of the receivers. Okay, going back into the spaghetti bowl of, uh, of cables in here. They're all coming out through here. Turn the exposure back down so it's not in the shadows. Um, going into our Focusrite Clarette 4 Pre, this is just the audio interface I happen to have. Um, four soloists, four inputs. Okay, of course from here, um, uh, Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter because it's a, a newer MacBook. Into the MacBook, does all the processing. Um, back to the interface. Here's the outputs of the interface. Uh, in this case, I have four outputs in this particular interface. Um, two, these two are for the synths, these two were the soloists. Um, I do recommend um, separating your synths from your soloists as much as possible. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, here's the outputs. Let me go back around. Come out uh, through here. Go back into, you know, our little spaghetti bowl of cables. You come back around through here. Here's our S32 digital stage box. Um, all the major uh, manufacturers, all the major boards that everyone seems to use now have, all have digital stage boxes. So whatever brand you, you use, this, we have a Behringer, so this is the S32. Uh, you know, Personas has theirs. Uh, Yamaha has theirs. Um, or if you're just using an analog snake, um, you know, you can plug that into there too. Anyways, so all the outputs from the interface come in here. And then since it's a digital stage box, we have a Cat5 cable that goes uh, out to our mixer. Select creating any other channel. Go to the Add Channel Strip. Select the type of audio, however many channels you want. Format, mono, right? Just like if it's, you know, single instrument coming in. Input, um, however, whatever input it's coming in from. Say one. Output. Uh, go to output, go to mono out, okay? And then whatever output uh, you want to come out from on your, for your channel, create. Here you have it, name it whatever you want to name it, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, let me just go ahead and delete that. Um, so now, setting levels, okay? You would set the gain, just like if you're recording, you would set it from your your gain knobs uh, on your interface. Okay, let me turn the brightness up here a little bit. Um, you set it from the gain knobs on your interface. Okay, um, and just like anywhere 
you know, you would think um, falling center practice, you'd set it um, and you want to set it to a point where, you know, you'd be at negative uh, 12 or uh, negative 18, um, depending, I know I've heard different things about that. Set it to negative 18, negative 12 um, on the level meter. The thing you got to realize though, um, when you do that, just because you have negative 18, you know, average on the meter, that doesn't mean you're gonna get negative 18 going into your mixer board. So you may need to, and that's just due because um, of whatever, however, what the output of your interface is like. Um, different interfaces have different outputs. So something to be aware of, you may need to put it a little bit more, you may be able to put, uh, bring it down a little bit, just kind of have to, um, you know, use your ears and look at your board, uh, what your levels are um, and set it uh, accordingly. For the, the band program I work with, uh, this the show we did this year was basically a production of Les Miserables, uh, the famous musical. Um, and in the show this year, we had four soloists. We had two vocalists, one singing the part of Eponine from, uh, from On My Own, another one singing the part of Cosette, Little Cosette from Castle in the Clouds, and then we had a trombone soloist and a saxophone soloist. Um, so this year, the reason why I want to run it through the computer, uh, well, there's a couple of reasons. One, on the vocal soloist, able to run lots of different uh, change of plugins, um, and a little bit more easily than through the, through, uh, through the mixer. And I think uh, they sound a little bit better. Um, same thing with the other vocal soloist. Um, and then on the, on the two, um, wind solos, the trombone and saxophone, I just use basic channel EQ and compressor. Um, but the main reason was the vocalist, so I wanted to kind of just have a better sound, kind of more of a studio sound. Um, it's easier, it was easier to do in the computer, I think, than try to get the same kind of sound from the effects in the, in the mixer. Um, the other reason to do this, last year on our show, we had, I think we had three or four soloists, I don't remember exactly anymore, but we had a problem with the, the kid that was running the mixer turning the mics on and off in time. So um, doing it this way, the mics turning on and off is, um, is controlled through the, by the synth player, okay? I'll show you how that, how that works. So if we go here, uh, if you can see, um, I have an opening patch just called Sound Test where all the where all the soloists are on. But that's an extra thing that main stage created. I don't know why it's there. But here at the beginning, we started with Castle in the Clouds. Um, if we look here in the channel strip section of the of the main stage, here we have Cosette. Okay, so she's singing, but then you know for the opening she has her solo. But then when we get to the next phrase, which here I have marked as letter, you know, as letter B of our show, um, she's no longer singing, so on letter B, I didn't create a patch for her. So as soon as my synth player switched to letter B, her mic's turned off, you know, as just part of her, the synth player doing her thing. Um, so I made it really easy that way, and that's kind of how it worked throughout the entire show. Um, if you go forward, um, letter F was where, sorry, letter F was where we had our s trombone and saxophone soloist, and hopefully you can see them right there. Um, you know, it's kind of a duet type thing, uh, going back and forth. Um, but they played for a while. Um, as she switched, as our, as our keyboard player switched patches, you see here, there's the next patch, a letter G patch. Um, there's still trombone and saxophone. So as she switched patches, you know, they're still playing. Since the channel exists on both the, on both the letter F patch and letter G patch, um, there's no interruption. So as, as we kept switching patches, that was seamless. Then as we continue through, oh, sorry, wrong button. As we continue through, letter is the letter H patch. Still have soloist. Continue to the next patch, the letter I patch, so I have soloist. Now in this next patch, this is when we're in, when we were in our production of uh, On My Own, we no longer had um, trombone or saxophone soloists, they're off. Um, now we have, uh, but the next part we had our, uh, 
our vocal soloist. So when they switch to letter J, um, you know, that turned, that turned that mic on because we created the patch. Now, you know, as you may see here, I do have a saxophone patch here. Um, that was a backup for when, um, for when our vocal soloist couldn't make it. So that's kind of a... Okay, looking back in the outputs, um, I mentioned earlier, um, you want to use different outputs for this. So in this case, and the Focus Right Claret 4 Pre only have uh, four outputs. So you're using the one and two for the synths themselves, or two synth players are both coming out through here, and then three and four were the, were the soloist. So the way I routed this is the, the two vocal soloist and the trombone soloist are coming through output three, which let me go back to the screen here. Let me dim this down a little bit. Um, you can see Cosette and Eponine, both our vocal soloists are coming through output three. Uh, trombones coming out through output three as well. Saxophones coming in through output four. Um, the reason why you want to do this, if you have them, the soloist coming out of different outputs from, at least from the synths, um, what that is, they're going into their own output, their own inputs in your mixer. And then within the mixer, you have more control over the levels uh, in the moments of the show. You know, if you don't, if they're coming out uh, with the, you know, the same outputs as the, as the synth, one, they're being summed, the audio signals being summed from the solos are being summed with the, um, with the synthesizers. And then two, you know, if there's too much synth or not enough soloist, from the board itself, um, you're, there's not much that you can do. Well, not anything can do, unless you were, had a router um, and you're running Logic Remote and controlling the main stage patch from, uh, from Logic Remote, then you could do it that way, but every time you switch patches, your levels will change anyways. So, uh, if you do this, um, well, if you do this, I, I highly recommend you use different outputs. Now, in my case, with the Claret 4 Pre, we only have two, we only have four outputs total. So two of which for the synth, two for the soloist, and I have four soloists. Now the soloists weren't all at the same time except for the trombone and saxophone. So this was the trombone, this was the saxophone, so I had them in two separate channels. The vocalist all came out through, through this output. If I had you know, eight or 10 outputs, I would have put each, every, each and every one um, into its own output, just so I can have its, like, its own channel on the board and just have more control uh, that way. But um, dealing with kind of the limitation of the technology I had, um, they were still separate from the synths, so I could still control them independently. And since, none, since there's only two uh, soloists in at a time at any point, um, it worked out well anyway, so I could control them independently um, and had, had enough control uh, for that. Okay, so here are some basic recommendations um, for doing this. Um, in the video, I talked about how to create uh, the channels and, and route, route it, the signal and all that stuff. But what I didn't talk about is how you get it across your different patches. So it's a real simple copy the channel on the initial patch that you make it and then paste it to the next to whatever patches you need it. I do recommend to paste them as aliased channels. Um, that way you can save on uh, memory space. Uh, you don't take up memory space unnecessarily. If you don't know how to paste a channel uh, across different patches as an alias channel, just look it up. It's real simple and there's, it's a pop down menu. There's also a shortcut. Next thing I would recommend on the interface, get an interface that's rack mounted. That way you can have it, you know, you can mount it, you can hook it up and leave it uh, mounted. You don't have to mess with it in the video. You know, we, I don't have a rack mounted interface um, just because I didn't think I would need all those inputs. And now looking back on it, I wish I had got a rack mounted interface. Um, but get a rack mounted interface, leave it set up. Um, you can set it and basically forget it. But also on top of that, um, in the video, you see that I was using Focusrite Claret 4 Pre. While that interface is not a bad interface in and of itself, it's not something I would recommend uh, for for what we're talking about right now. The, um, the preamps are, are not digitally controlled. So basically at any point, any person, any kid can go up and even accidentally or intentionally because of you know whatever reason can change your gain levels and um, it can be a very bad 
thing to go up to a performance and someone turned the gain too high on a solo list and then you get massive feedback or distortion. So get something uh, that has digitally controlled preamps. Um, I myself, I'm looking forward to try to get a, a Personas Quantum, the one that's rack mounted, um, you know, and see how that works. On a computer, get as powerful a computer as you can afford, okay? Um, the thing you got to think about, you're not only running your synths, you know, you're running audio. And part of the reason to do this um, is to run, you know, plugins to run lots of effects, which take up processing power. So, you know, the last thing you want to have happen is, you know, to, for, for it to get overloaded and then you have dropouts and the other kinds of weird distortion. If you've ever uh, experienced that, it's not pleasant. So you want as much processing power as you can afford. You want as much RAM as you can afford because, you know, now you're adding more stuff to each patch. You don't want to be using the majority of your memory, you know, doing that. So you want to have some some buffer there. And with the hard drive, I do think a minimum of half a terabyte will is kind of basic, uh, bare minimum of what you need. A uh, full terabyte will probably more than suit you for, for, for our purposes, but, you know, it comes down to samples and, you know, if you're getting third-party samples, um, you know, you need space for all that stuff. And same thing if you're getting uh, third-party plugins. If you're having audio dropouts because the processing power is too much, the the other thing you do from computer end is set the, buff, the um, buffer to a higher sample rate but if, if you know what that does, you set a higher higher buffer, which means it's more latency, so you get more delay. Um, so you want to avoid that. You want, you know, have a pretty instant response. If you need a delay because of, um, you know, phase issues, you want to be the one that's in control of that, not have be forced into delay because of your, uh, of your computer not being powerful enough to keep up. Um, the other thing I do recommend with regards to power Interfaces they have, um, and, and MacBooks, they have those big power adapters. I do recommend that you get like a small extension cable to plug on uh, into the power adapters and then plug that into your power conditioner. That way, like in transportation, um, you know, all the vibration from, from, from the cart being pushed, you don't have the power adapter coming loose and then you get on the field and then something doesn't turn on and then you're struggling to figure out what it is and you know, just save yourself from stress. The other thing too, uh, regarding hubs, if you wanted to use a connection hub for your computer, um, I personally did not use any hubs. I had USB-B to USB-C cables, everything plugged directly into the computer. I had no need for extra ports. Um, I also had never had any issues with anything dropping out. So if you need to get a hub, get a nicer hub, invest in a nicer hub. Um, and then basically invest in quality gear Okay, so reasons why you want to do this, the advantages. Um, there's really two main advantages. The first main advantage, um, especially, and this is particularly to Texas bands um, with UIL roles or any band contest where there's a role where a student has to operate the mixer. If you set it up this way, you don't need to rely on a student to mute or unmute the soloist or any other mics you may uh, want to be using. Um, because it is a part of the synth players going through their show and changing patches. So that can make things really smooth and, in my experience, very reliable. You can count on those mics to turn on and off when they need to. The other advantage to this is you have a lot of flexibility and options for effects and plugins. You know, if you're going directly into the board, you're limited um, by what your board has. You do it this way, you, of course, have the stock main stage uh, plugins that come with it which there's a lot of them are really good. The compressor has a lot of options. The new reverb is pretty good, you know, and you also have other options with third-party plugins like from Waves or uh, FabFilter or any other brand uh, really of compressors, reverbs, EQs, um, whatever. So just a lot of options to really uh, shape the sound in the way that you want. Okay, and now the disadvantages of this, things to watch out for or you know, just to be aware of. First off, there will be a lot more points of failure. There's more connections, more cables, you know, more stuff, you know, in the signal path that can go wrong. So in my experience, I didn't really have issues with cables going bad or connections going bad, you know, because it's all quality gear. Um, but that is a possibility to be aware of. Uh, but the biggest disadvantage of this, of running your solo is through main stage, is the reliance on a computer. 
Okay, computers have come a long way, but they can still be fickle and go and shut down on you at the exact wrong moment. They're just awesome at that. So um, you need to be aware of that, you know, going into this. You know, there's some things to, you know, that can help out you know, UPS beforehand so you can turn around before you get on the field. Obviously, it can help. Um, one of the big issues probably to be aware of is heat. I know when that new i9 MacBook came out earlier this year, you know, thermal throttling became one of the big topics of it. But, you know, really since those that Mac design came out in 2016, that design of body for the MacBooks changed from the previous one. There used to be a, a central vent in the in the middle, in the back of the MacBooks. That was an intake vent. The current body style of MacBooks um, do, does not have that vent. So when you're out in the sun, in rehearsal or if you have a contest midday and it you know it's a warm sunny day that will heat up the computer and it gets to a certain point and your computer will have a, you know will experience thermal throttling which will slow down the computer and you know we talked about earlier how that can cause all kinds of issues you need to have some kind of solution to be prepared for that it is worth mentioning you can also set up a redundant system um, but that costs a lot of money because you basically need two of everything in addition to a MIDI splitter and an audio splitter. And in the case of, of adding, you know, running Solus through main stage, you would also need um, another channel splitter, which if you get a, you know, one of the art brand uh, channel splitter, that's 250 bucks. If you want to go for something more high end, I mean, that can cost you a thousand or so if you go with a radio. So that is a possible solution. You know, if you want the maximum security in this, but then at that point, things start getting really expensive. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was informative. I hope it was helpful. Um, if there's something that I missed or uh, some aspect of this that needs a little bit, little bit more clarification, please drop me a line and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and hopefully help you out. Thank you again and um, see you later.